Hello everybody, Spotted Gecko here again bringing you another video for the game World of Warships Legends. And today we're going to be looking at the guide in gameplay to the brand new campaign ship, the Tier 7 US Battleship, the Premium Massachusetts. There she is, right there. Nice looking ship with a half decent looking uh, camo on it. Looks pretty good. I believe, if I'm correct, that this is a, uh, a sister ship of the uh, South Dakota class, if I'm not mistaken. But if I am wrong, I'm sorry about that. You can correct me in the comments. Anyways, let's have a look. Now, for this guiding gameplay, we're going to look at the premium upgrade slots. We'll look at the consumables, the stats, as well as the armor viewer. And for a commander of choice on here, which is going to be William Sims as a accuracy dispersion build. And then we're going to take this ship out in a standard match to see how it performs. So let's first look at the premium upgrade slots. And for the Massachusetts, we have uh, four upgrade slots we can make use of since it's a tier seven ship. Now, our focus here is going to be a dispersion accuracy build. However, you can get a very viable secondary build out of the Massachusetts. And uh, that would be for another video. This one's going to be accuracy dispersion. So we have secondary battery or we have main battery mod. Now we are going to be choosing the main battery mod here. So, and what does the main battery mod do? Let's just have a quick back look here. It can give you an increase to your uh, traverse speed. However, you're going to take a, a hit to your reload time on your battleship of 5%. However, we are going to choose this one. All right, so next here, it's really too bad we don't have aiming systems in the first one. That would have been nice. Now, for the second one, we have steering gear, damage control, and propulsion mod. And I'm choosing propulsion mod because of my style of play. I like having that 50% extra acceleration because I do a lot of stop and go and repositioning of my ship. Next one is we only have target acquisition, 20% to both spotting range and torpedo det detectability, as well as a 50% increase to the guaranteed acquisition of ships, which is nice. And lastly, we have artillery plotting control room, secondary battery mod for any of those secondary builds, as well as another main battery here. However, I am definitely going with the artillery plotting mod. Get this control room so we can get a minus 11% to our dispersion, which is really important to a dispersion accuracy build, especially for the Massachusetts. So that's the premium upgrade slots that I've chosen for this. Now let's look at the stats. The stats for this ship, tier seven, where we've got almost 70,000 in hull points, which is really nice. Armor is a six to 657 millimeters. And we've also got a beautiful 46% torpedo damage reduction belt. That's very nice to have. Artillery, let's have a look at this. Now we've got three triple turrets of our 406 millimeter guns. Very nice. Firing range right now is at 18.4 kilometers. We have a reload of 31.5 seconds. That's pretty long. We have a 180 degree turn time for our turrets of around 29 seconds. Our HE shells do 5700 with a 36% fire chance. And our AP shells do a not too shabby 14.4 thousand in damage. And like I mentioned, this can make a very good secondary build because you can get a secondary build up to 10.4 kilometers. And that is, you're looking at 10 dual 127 mils. That's really nice to have. And they're highly accurate. So secondary builds will be a thing for the Massachusetts. But we're doing, it, we're doing accuracy dispersion for this. Maneuverability. Right now it's a speed of 24.8 knots. Just took a hit because of what I have on here. And we have a turn circle radius of 710 and a rudder shift of 17.2. Concealment, big ship, you're going to get spotted no matter what. Now, next let's look at the overview of the ship. Now the ship is agile. Above average ability to change direction. Very similar to the Alabama. She's got a sticky shot, very similar to Alabama as well. Reduced ricochet chance, greater chance of penetration, uh, with your enemy, the enemy ship armor at sharper angles. That's a really good thing to have. And we've got a below average main battery reload time. So yeah, that's, that's okay. Now it says here, yep, right here, a South Dakota class battleship designed subject to treaty limitations. The ship had well-balanced characteristics in terms of armament, speed, and armor protection. By the end of World War II, 
the ship had a very powerful double A defense. And that's going to be important when the carriers arrived to this game. Entered service in 1942, ships in the service of which there were four. Now, let's look at the armor viewer. This is that new uh, tool we now have uh, for the game. And the one thing I want to focus on with the armor viewer is you can see, I'm going to turn these things off here, is we're going to focus on the citadel, the vital part of the ship, and what you have to be careful when you're playing with this ship. Now, you can see right now, if we look at the citadel bottom, um, the bulkhead is uh, well armored. We've got 60 to 274 millimeters of armor down there on the Citadel. That's kind of nice. We look at the deck, though. The deck is where you are going to be have to be very cautious. You don't really want to brawl with this ship. And the reason is, is because of the deck armor of your Citadel. Now, you can have that penetrated going in through the superstructure right into the uh, deck of the citadel there because it's only got a very limited 16 millimeter armor in the middle that's very very thin armor however you are sitting with um, a deck armor on the citadel in your turret area of 38 mil which is great however the rear turret you're gonna have to watch out for that because you have a very limited uh, um, deck armor in there as well and that's looking at 25 to 26 in that green area there so you got to be very careful even though that your citadel is very nicely below the water and it's got some really good plate armor down there in the citadel if you look at that you're looking at 60 to 274 millimeters of armor down there your vulnerability is going to be in the superstructure area and the rear turret in your citadel that's where they're going to hammer you in the citadels because everywhere else in the ship if you look our four for bow tanking this thing we've got 50 millimeters on the bottom but if you look up here to the four end plating there's 32 mils right there that's going to bounce most things when you're angled which is nice except for the 18 inch guns from the Yamato and you look at the rear we got some good deck in uh, um, hull plating there on the rear too it's going to bounce, bounce most things if you're as long as you're angled nicely all right so just be aware of that we turn that off and we look at the uh, hull, the side plating along here, we've got 32 mils of side plating along the water line there. You see it along there? There's along the water line. So that's gonna bounce a lot of shells there, as well as a side plate that goes into the water there. However, if we turn that off and go up to here, the casemate armor, you can see along there, the casemate armor is also well utilized there. The armor belt is sitting in at, uh, if we look at it, the armor belt there, 32 to 310. And we've got the deck armor there too, thankfully, at uh, 38 there as well. Now do note, just be aware, you do have some limitations on the broad side of your, uh, of your mass tools, which means you have to be cognizant of when you're going to go broadside because that broadside when you get it in through the superstructure there, they can go right directly into your citadel, and that is going to blow your ship <laughs> blow your ship up pretty darn quick. So my suggestion with this ship is you want to angle it well to bounce that stuff because it's got really good bow armor there to bounce, except against a, um, a Yamato. And most things, pretty much the Yamato 18-inch shells can basically overmatch or penetrate most stuff in the game. Anyways, that's the, um, the armor viewer. Now let's go back up and uh, look at the actual consumables in this ship. Everything in the consumables is pretty much the normal. We're looking at about a 344 HP per section on our heels. And for this one, we chose the, uh, the secondary enhanced uh, targeting, but you can also choose spotter plane, which might be a nice one to choose, getting that extra accuracy with your dispersion accuracy. And there's of course the observation plane you could choose as well. We had the prim camel on here and we've got the CC flag on there. All right, let's pull out of here. Let's now look at Sims. Now, the Sims for my Massachusetts here, we're going to bring him up now. We have him at a very high level build. He's level 16, and he's a legendary level 3. Now, this is what I've chosen for the build for the Massachusetts for now. Cunningham, as always, without question, is my number one go-to guy as my first inspiration for my dispersion accuracy builds on my battleships. All because he's got that beautiful shell grouping skill for accuracy 
and Cunningham is a high level as well, and he's at 4.5% initially. Now, the new thing I've done with my uh, Battleship Commanders is my secondary inspiration has now become a Sharnhorst. Sharnhorst is now high level, and she's got this beautiful sniper skill, which, in, which will improve the dispersion of your main battery. Right now, it's at minus 0.32%, and that is a perfect thing to have for your dispersion accuracy commanders. Base trait, as we all know for Sims, has got built to last, giving you extra hull points for your ship. Now, first level skills, you have um, not one for nuisance, and you've got uh, flammable can here. We are choosing this one. We want the extra shell grouping accuracy as well as the range on the guns, even though we are taking a significant risk of catching fire due to the HE spamming ships out there. It is a risk to take this, but we're going to mitigate that risk with another skill on here. Second, we're going to take, take gyrating drill bits, getting increased, uh, improving our battleship um, traverse speed for our guns, as well as getting that beautiful AP additional damage to our shells. And that's being offset by a battleship speed, which we have no problem taking. Now, for a third, there's no way I would suggest taking this one here, this skill. However, taking marksmanship for your dispersion accuracy build is a definite. you got to have this. That minus 10% to your dispersion is so important, even though you're going to take a bit of a hit to your rudder shift. That's not a big deal. The fourth level, we are going to be taking the uh, properly meticulous to give us the enhanced secondary batteries. Now, this um, new legendary skill here... Normally, I would suggest will to rebuild no matter what. This is a great, great skill and one that you still might want to consider. But we are testing out, <coughs> excuse me, we are testing out the new legendary skill, Fight Fire with Fire. And I think this, is, this skill is significant when you get to the higher level. Legendary level 3 will reduce your burning damage by minus 15%. And I think that's significant. But what's also important about this skill is that removes the damage over time effects from your ship whenever there are three concurrent fires and reduced fire damage. This effect can only be triggered if your damage control party, though, is in cooldown. Now, this is a nice one to select, especially if you're going to be choosing Flammable Cannoneer. So I think it offsets it really, really nice. And that's how we have Sims set up for this. Now, we're going to go back here. Now, let's take this ship out for a standard match and see how well this new campaign ship performs. So, please stick around for that. Okay, well, thank you for sticking around to watch the match with this brand new Tier 7 uh, U.S. Premium Battleship, the Massachusetts. We're going to be going into a standard match. Don't do note, this match is pre-recorded. I'm simply doing the audio over top of it afterwards. We're going to be in the estuary in a capture the base type mode here. And we're going to see how well the Massachusetts performed. Now, this is one of the uh, first, maybe uh, my first or second battle in the Massachusetts. Now, do note, this is not, and I repeat not, a Kraken match or six or seven sinkings or spectacular gameplay. I want this to be a match that shows you what you can get on average with the Massachusetts when you take it out to play. So it's a standard match. Now, if we look here... We can see that we're going up against a destroyer, a couple of cruisers, and a couple of battleships. And we're in the estuary, and it looks like we got spawned here on the um, the south, the north side, right in the middle. I don't like being in the middle. I either go left or I go right. Now, in this match here, we're going to head over to the right and help out the guys on the right-hand side. Let's get this uh, ship moving. And sometimes, every once in a while, you got to be careful here, because uh, if you've been playing the game long enough, sometimes you can uh, spot those uh, ships on the other side of the island, especially if you have planes in the air, or if you have a store that's going up front. And you can take some pot shots here and there, some, some Hail Marys over the island, hit some of those ships. Now, it looks like the uh, Terpitz there is going to be leaving that side of the map, but we're going to go over back over there, and we're going to support those other two ships that are over there. We don't want to leave them by themselves. And I'm assuming that the Tripitz is going to be hitting all the way to the other side of the map where he's going in the middle, one of the two. Not one of the best moves, but you know what? Everyone plays the game a little differently, and a lot of people don't play the way you like to play, so you have to adapt to that. That's the only way you're going to do well in this game is by adapting 
and uh, not worrying about how others, others play the game because you just have to adapt to it. Because people have different styles of play. Now, there's our first target. It's a Roma. Now, we're going to take the shot, even though we... And I realized right then and there I had HE loaded. So, we're going to switch over to AP. <laughs> okay. Now, we did take a hit there from the AP. I mean, the HE. And we didn't get a hit at all with our first salvo out there. Now, we are being located by someone's twist and track. You saw that pop up there. Now, we do have a... Uh, couple cruises we're going to be supporting here. Now we're located again, so there's a destroyer out there somewhere. So we now know the destroyer is definitely on this side of the map. So we're going to slow it up here because we don't want to take any torp hits. And we've got a beautiful Iowa sitting out there that we are going to test our guns on. Now here comes the torps. So we made the right choice. Now we're going to try to throw these into the Iowa there. And we have to be uh, cognizant of the fact that we don't want... There we go. we got a Citadel into the Iowa. Now, if you look at the armor viewer on the Iowa, you will notice where the uh, weak points are on the Iowa, especially on its broadside. And we have to be cognizant of our own broadside because we do have some weaknesses in our Citadel area, especially along the deck area, in the superstructure area. So we do not want to show a flat broadside from our Massachusetts at all because another battleship will simply Citadel us on the broadside. Now, look at that. We just out. We just basically wiped out that Belfast there in one salvo, and we got the devastating strike. So, <laughs> the bank tell you the Belfast is a beautiful ship, but it didn't hold up very well to the 16-inch shells from our uh, Massachusetts here. So that was a good hit. So let's have a look here. Now we're going to keep focusing on this Iowa here. Looks like he's slowly creeping along the little channel there, and now he's disappeared. But we're going to wait. We're going to be patient. There's that Roma again. And we still have that destroyer sitting in around here. So we've got to be very aware of that. Even though we got a 48% uh, torpedo belt protection on here. That's really nice, especially against those Yudachis. And now we're going to focus on the Roma. Now there is a nice weak spot on the broad side of the Roma as well. We're going to see if we can uh, hit that. We don't, but we do get a number of penetrations there. And our secondaries are already firing away. You can see the hits we're getting already from it. We're going to keep backing it up here because we're going to keep focusing on the Roma. I think we may have gotten three sinkings in this match. We could have easily gotten more, but uh, unfortunately we didn't. We got a good hit on us from the Roma. But you see here, right into our broadside there, even though we're angled, it's still penetrated. We're going to take another shot into the Roma here. He's angled, though, but we're going to put that into a superstructure. Getting ourselves a single penetration, though. Not good enough. But the Roma's been now in. Roma is now going full broadside here. We still have 16 seconds to reload there. We're going to keep ourselves angled against it. And if I'm not mistaken, it's going to be sunk before we fire, so... Yeah, there it goes. It just blew up there. And now we're in a kind of a bad situation because we do have the Iowa sitting over in the islands over there. And we want to angle from away from the Iowa. we got to keep our ship angled no matter what against those big bad battleships. Now there we go. There's the Iowa. The Iowa's angled there, so it's much, much more difficult to hit that thing in a really good spot. But we can hope for some penetrations to the deck here. We're going to take those date down through the superstructure there. And unfortunately, we got one penetration, but it's minor. We'll take it. Retreat now. And you see our cruisers are keep firing going on there. So we're going to take a shot on to the Iowa. And that's, why, that's how you want your IOS to. You want your IOS to be angled like that as well. You want to angle your ship at a good 45 to 60 degree angle that gives a chance to ricochet those shells. Now, the Massachusetts here has a really good bow armor as well as stern armor. So as long as you keep it angled, you're going to uh, basically have a good chance of bouncing those shells. The only thing that's going to overmatch your bow, I believe, will be the Yamato. 
Now that you got some great shell groupings from uh, from Sims here, and there we go. I got some four penetrations in there. That's really good. So the uh, the uh, masters is as long as you have a really good high level commander on here, Sims is the guy. I think it's going to be a really good accuracy dispersion board, but I really think that this ship can do really well also as a secondary. But you don't really want to brawl with this ship, though, I don't think. So we're going to get a good shot in here in the Iowa now, because he's just basically giving us the broadside to hit there. And that should sink the Iowa, That sh those shells there. And there we go. We got the Iowa. All right, so... Now, it looks like uh, they still have a destroyer out there somewhere. And I'm not going to go hunt down a destroyer. Nope, the destroyer's in the middle. You can see he's taking the cap there. So now we're going to focus in on that destroyer. Now, we didn't load the HE, which, on you know, hindsight, I would have load HE here. And we are... Um, oh, I think I didn't... Oh, yeah, this match... Um, like I said, this match was pre-recorded. I don't have the fight fire with fire legendary skill running. I have the will to rebuild skill running on this one. It was a different match that I had the uh, fight fire with fire skill on here. So just be aware of that. That's one correction I want to make. Because you saw in the beginning, I, I talked about the uh, fight fire with fire. Choosing that. But for this one, I have will to rebuild going. Okay. Just want to clarify that. Now there is that bloody Adachi. <laughs> It's a, it's a, it's a good, it's a good destroyer, you know. I play that destroyer. It, it, you can, you can rack up a lot of points in it, that's for sure. But man, the, Shim, the Shimakaze is basically a super Yadachi. Anyways, let's focus on this uh, Yadachi. He is in smoke right now. Now, if it was me, I would not stay in that smoke. I would be carting out of there. And I'd be probably going off towards the right where I'm pointing over there. That's where I would be going with my Yadachi. If, yep, there he is. He's doing the same thing. And he's he's carting away there. We're going to take a shot in before he disappears. See if we can hit him. And sure enough, we did get a penetration on him. So we got some damage into him. And that's good. Any damage on a destroyer is good damage because he can't heal it. Now, they are down to four boats now. And we've only lost one. And we got him out of our cap, which was good. That's what we wanted to do. Now, we're still worried about the Adachi because, as you know, the Adachi's got some high-yield torpedoes and he could throw a lot of them at you. So as long as you're uh, bow tanking towards where the Adachi was, you can limit yourself to at least one, maybe two uh, torpedo hits, which you can survive in your battleship, especially with a 48% uh, torpedo belt. And you want to make sure you have those torpedoes hit you in the torpedo belt, not right on the bow. We're going to keep moving forward. Now, we've racked up 78,000 in damage. I think on average, you're going to be, with this ship, uh, on average, you, 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 you can rack up easily 100,000 uh, damage in a match. No problem in an average match. You can see our battleship up there, the Tripitz is screening. Okay, there's Yadachi. He's gone way over there. He's gone down that area. And we have a Hipper sitting way out there. We're going to go long range strike on the Hipper here. Look at the beautiful shell grouping there. See how tight they were going out there? That's the beauty of having a high level Sims built for accuracy dispersion. And the Sharni commanders really helped. We only got one penetration there, but man, they look good. The shells with Sims now. Nice work. Roger. Now we're just parking ourselves here because we want to see if we can see the hipper again. There it is. We're going to reload and take another shot in that hipper. There they go. And then we're going to put the rest of our forward batteries at the hipper. And we're going to see if we can take it out. Those look really good going in. And sure enough, there we go. We got the Citadel. And boom, we get our third sinking there. They only have one ship left. And that ship is way off, way, way down there in the corner of the map. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you've had matches where you've seen ships show up in the corner of a map. And I have no idea. I'm guessing he's there because he's being chased by the destroyer, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> but it's a battleship out there. Or maybe he's backed himself up into a corner. Who knows? Either way, the match is pretty much over now for the Massachusetts. 
And that just gives you a basic idea of how well this ship can perform. It's very, now I'll give you this. If you have the Alabama, it's very similar to the Alabama. And, I, and of course, because the Alabama is, it's sister, is, a, is a sister ship for this ship. It's a South Dakota class ship. The biggest difference between this ship and the Alabama is the fact that this ship has longer range um, secondaries and the secondaries are very, very accurate on this ship. And I think that's the thing with all the U.S. secondaries. I think the U.S. secondaries are pretty accurate to begin with. It's just that you can make a very nice secondary build out of this, but you're not going to be able to brawl with the uh, Massachusetts like you can, for example, with the Bismarck. The Bismarck can brawl with its secondaries, whereas I think you're going to have much difficulties brawling with this. However, it's going to be interesting to try out, for example, Willis on here as a secondary commander. And um, you could do another accuracy commander on here with uh, Justinian, the uh, Warhammer 40K commander. That might be of interest to give that a shot. But either way, I am going to give the secondary build a try, but I'm probably going to end up keeping this as a accuracy dispersion build with Sims. I think it works out really well, and I think I've proven that with this uh, with this video here. I think you're going to probably enjoy the Massachusetts a lot better with Sims. But you know what? There are a number of people out there that love doing secondary builds. I love, for example, my secondary build on my Bismarck. And that's a great build, especially now with the buffs. However, I'm really interested to see how the fight fire with fire skill is going to work on this with Sims. And I'm going to be playing a bit, number of matches with that as well. I like to see how that's going to work and to see whether they're going to nerf that or not. We'll see. Anyways, we do have the battleship sitting way, way out there. We're going to have a look for a moment to see what he's doing. There he is. He's running away. Not much you can do, but he's being he's being uh, hammered out there now. You can see all the shells going in. And there he goes. There you have it. That's the match, guys. Let's see how we did overall. And we'll have a look at here momentarily. And uh, there it is. 91,000. We didn't make 100, but we got uh, three sinkings, a couple citadels. We got third on the leaderboard there. Overall, a pretty good standard match that you can expect to have in the Massachusetts. So enjoy grinding for this through the campaign. I would personally recommend you spending the 2,500 doubloons on the campaign because you're going to get two ships, the Ahagi as well as the Massachusetts, as well as a ton of other stuff. So it's well worth the money. Anyways, hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please give me a like. Of course, be wonderful if you subscribe for uh, future videos on my channel. Other than that, this is Spotted Captain Gamer. I will see you on the seas next time.